Hello, everyone. Welcome back to my Code to Care series. Uh, what I'm doing here is talking about how generative AI models are trained. And there's really three phases. There's pre-training, there's fine-tuning, and then there's prompt before the prompt. And in this short video, I'm going to talk about the pre-training uh, process. And this is the training that uh, you don't personally do, but companies that sort of produce these big, large language models like OpenAI or Google or... Uh, AWS or um, uh, open source models, that kind of thing. They're going to do this pre-training pre -training for you on a large corpus of text, like all the internet, let's say, or all of Wikipedia or those sorts of things. And what they're doing here is they're basically training the model um, in a self-supervised way. So the model is not being, nothing's being labeled by humans, but they're taking sentences and training the model on different tasks with those sentences. So there's um, three tasks that uh, they typically do. The first is um, one that you might already know, predict the next word. So let's say they're ripping through Wikipedia, taking you know partial sentences, that sort of thing. They'll take five words, and then they'll have the model predict that sixth word, and they'll compare it to the actual sixth word, and they'll adjust the weights accordingly. So the model gets good at sort of predicting that next word. The second time, uh, and this was a big advancement a few years ago that really put these, uh, these large language models on the map in terms of their performance, is um, masking sentences, 15% masked sentences. So uh, they'll take a sentence. I um, found a random sentence generator online earlier today. Uh, and here's a sentence like, there are few things better in life than a slice of pie. Actually, let me uh, take a moment to write that. There are few things better in life than a slice of pie. So they'll run across a sentence like this in Wikipedia or wherever they're doing. They'll randomly select 15% of that sentence. And I did the same thing earlier today. And these, this is what the 15% Get knocked off. And they teach the model to guess the missing word. So this is kind of a bi-directional thing, not just guess the next uh, word. And so you can say there are a few things um, uh, more fulfilling, I guess, is two words, but uh, I'd better, better might be one of the most logical guesses. But you can imagine the second one, you could say slice of pie. You can say piece of pie. Um, you know, there are a few different options uh, there. And what it's teaching the model is both related words like slice and piece go with the word pie, um, but also that slice and piece are similar words. Like if you just trained on this one sentence, you wouldn't find that out. But if you train on a lot of sentences that might talk about uh, cheesecake or pizza or pumpkin pie or thing Thanksgiving dinners or whatever, it's going to see slice and piece used in similar contexts. So it's learning the words of the English language in these cases, which ones are kind of synonymous, pretty close, related to each other, that sort of thing. So that's part of the model, the large language model, is learning these relationships between words and what they mean. Um, and then the third task they typically do is next sentence prediction. And what they will do is they will take... Um, for half of the training data, they'll take two sentences that they find together. Let's say in Wikipedia, I found two sentences. Um, Theodore Seuss Geisel was an American children's author and cartoonist. Sentence one. Sentence two is, he is known for his work writing and illustrating more than 60 books under the pen name Dr. Seuss. So these are two sentences. They appear together and they'll half of the training data will be like that. Half of the training data will be two sentences that aren't together. So... People generally approve of dogs eating cat food, but not cats eating dog food. I don't know if that's true, but I found it somewhere. Um, and then teens, the teens wondered what was kept in the red shed on the far edge of the schoolyard. These are just two sentences pulled from two separate places that don't go together. So essentially, they take these pairs of sentences, either from apart or together, and they train the model to figure out which ones should follow each other. So what does this do? This teaches the model how the flow of the English language works, how you take a topic and then you continue to talk about the topic, but you enhance your discussion of the topic. You start to use, I don't know, prepositions or things like that, referring back to things. So, um, so it kind of teaches you the flow of the language 
and more about what words sort of extend a story. Um, so that's how these models are trained, actually. Uh, there's a lot of uh, detail, but basically they're given these um, self-supervised tasks with all of the Internet, and then they, they kind of learn the language itself and become a large language model, but then um, then they have to do further tasks to really make that uh, make that useful. So that's uh, that's what pre-training is all about. I hope that was uh, interesting. And until next time, bye.